Thank you, Bill. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Union Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome whether you are joining us online or here in the sanctuary, whether it is your first or 500th time worshiping with us. If it is your first time here, we invite you to fill out a welcome card that you'll find in your pews, and later in the service when they pass the offering plates around, we invite you to put that in as your offering this morning so that we might reach out and say thank you for being with us and help you connect further to our church if you so desire. Thank you, Walter, for showing us what that looks like. This morning is a special day in the life of our church. Uh, we have a double header of a church service. Uh, which I don't know, I think probably it's happened at some point in the church's history. I know it has happened at other points in the church history, but it has been a long time. So at 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, we will have a service of installation, formally installing me as the lead minister here. And in between, now and then, we'll have some fellowship and share a meal together. But this morning, I am delighted to be able to welcome Reverend Craig Peterson, who is our Associate Conference Minister here in the Central Atlantic Conference of the United Church of Christ. Craig served local churches for 21 years in Colorado and California before moving to New Jersey about a year and a half ago. Um, and serving as our associate conference minister. He works to support local churches, ministers, and lay leaders, equipping all of us for the work of ministry and playing a really key role in connecting us. We have been so blessed uh, by Craig's presence already here in the New Jersey Association, and I'm just delighted to be able to welcome you uh, as our guest preacher. So thank you for being here. So let us breathe in the spirit of the living God that is here and present among us already. I invite you to prepare your hearts for worship and stand if you are able to join me in the call to worship found in your bulletins. Come and worship, all you who love and serve the Lord, outsiders and insiders, old timers and newcomers, the young, the old, and in between, gay or straight, trans or cis, black, white, or brown, and anywhere in between. Come as you are, for this is God's house, a house of prayer for all people, and God welcomes each one who comes.
ended after you stopped ta tapping your feet. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father and Mother of us all, you call us like a good parent to you to guide and protect us, to nourish and lead us. Brother Jesus, you call us like a caring elder to serve us and help us, to cheer us and invite us. Healing Spirit, you call us and move us ever closer into fellowship with you and each other. Yet, we strain at your guidance. We try to break away and do it ourselves. We feel our strength and imagine ourselves to be all powerful. We rejoice in our life and imagine ourselves to be immortal. We know our talents and want to be independent rather than to depend on you. Before we know it, we are in the grip of other powers, leading us away from your loving ways into selfish greed, adoring false gods of materialism and power. God, forgive us and free us. Open our eyes to how your wisdom knows true leadership to be service. Open our hearts that we may learn that neither race or tribe, culture or religion, are barriers to separate us, but that we are all one family in your love. So open our hearts and our minds this morning to learn again to live your love as we celebrate and worship you here together. Friends, we are forgiven. We are loved just as we are, even in our shortcomings, that we might be freed to try again to build the kingdom of God, to welcome each other as family of God, to love one another in right relationship. As people who know and can claim that forgiveness, that love, and that right relationship, may we share that with each other. The peace of God and the peace of Christ be with you all. Peace. I didn't dare sit in that. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading is from Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called them to, to him and spoke to them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, 
but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. All right, I would like to invite any of the children who are here this morning to come join me on the chancel steps. Good morning. Hi, Xander. Hi, Scout. How are you guys? Hi, Walter. Nice button. Hi, Catherine. Hi, here comes Phoebe. Good morning. How's it going? I love Good. my mom. Oh, I love, I love too. my mom. Yes. So we're actually going to talk about moms today. Yeah, and I made this. Awesome. And other people in our family. So can I ask you guys, who, who's in your families? You. So, all right. So we'll start with you, Walter. I'm in your family. Who else is in our family? Me. My brother that can... Childcare. Your brother's in child care. Who else? Daddy, which is right over there. Yep, Daddy's right back there. Yep, so that's me. Yeah. Catherine, how about you? Who's in your family? Um, my mom, dad, sister, and brother, and Shadow. Mm-hmm. Um, and my grandma and grandpa. Yeah, so your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, and your grandma and your grandpa. My grandma awesome. and my grandpa. Yeah, we have grandparents too. <laughs> and uh, they're going on to like the, yeah. the yeah. How about you guys, Xander and Phoebe and Scout? Who's in your family? Um, Brooke. 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 That have two dads. Yeah, families that have two dads. Like your mom, Absolutely. Like your brothers or two babies. Yep, or two moms or two I siblings. Have you have a baby, so we forgot to add your baby in your family. That's right. Does your baby have oh, a yeah, name? Oh, and it's bigger than my family. Pat. No. Oh. And also Fred's in all families. Oh, that's Fred. We forgot to mention Fred. Yeah, so families can look all kinds of different ways. Freddy. Some families have one person, two people. All the way up to like, I don't a know, million. a million, maybe not a million, but a lot of people, right? Like, Some families five, have ten. two parents or more, and they can be parents that are moms or dads or other kinds of people. So we know that families have all different combinations. Well, what Jesus. About the families of colors. Families of colors. Yeah, you mean like this kind of colors? Yeah. yeah. All the oranges, all the webs, all the yellows, all the greens, yeah, all that, the blues, all the That's a diff- yeah, that. different kind of use of the word family. So Jesus, in the story that Kathleen read to us a little bit, gets asked, who is my brother and my sister or my brother? Did anybody hear what Jesus said to that question? Oh. Uh, yeah, Catherine, you remember? Yeah, he says, the people who do the will of God are my family. So what does that mean? The correct answer is animals. He he doesn't talk about animals, but maybe that has something to do with it. What does it mean to do the will of God, to follow Jesus? I don't know. It's a big question, right? That's like a high school question. That's like a high school question, yeah. (laughs) Do not send your animals high school questions. So... That's a big question, and a reason that all of these people come to church every week is that we're all still trying to figure out the answer to that question. Exactly. But 
it also gives us a little clue as to what Jesus meant. Because in addition to all of the families that you described, we can also think about everybody here as a church family. And everybody in the world who is trying to love their neighbor and love God, whether they go to church or synagogue or a mosque or find other ways to do that, they can also be our family because we share that common goal. And I think that's what Jesus meant by that's who my family is. It's not narrow. It's not just who lives in the walls of your house. It's animals. It's everybody who tries to love God and love our neighbor. And even love all of creation, right? All of the animals. So we could even think about it's not just people. Yeah. So this month, does anyone know, There's a, a June is a month where we celebrate. Yes. Pride month. Pride month, that's right. It will also be Father's Day next week, yes. But Pride month is a special month where we celebrate, especially families that include lesbians and gay this. people and transgender people, and celebrate that there can be all different kinds of families. So, will you guys pray with me? All right, repeat after me. Loving God. Thank you for our families. All different kinds of families. Thank you for church family. Help us to love one another. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for telling me all about your families. And you can make your way to learning centers, and we'll see you after church. We'll have some games outside, okay? Anthem is a reflection on family, a reflection on unity. And as such, we invite you to do something a little different for us at Union Congregational Church. We invite you to sing with us. You have the words in your bulletin. You don't have to sing the whole thing. Music is meant to be shared as a community, so however you choose to participate is up to you. But the song is very repetitive, as you can see in your bulletin. And we invite you to join in when you feel ready. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, will stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle.
Good morning. On behalf of our conference minister, Reverend Freeman Palmer, and the entire ministry team, I want to say it's great to be with you this morning on a very special weekend. A weekend where you are not only celebrating pride here in Montclair, but installing a new lead minister as you open an exciting and new chapter in your long and rich history here at Union. As you were listening to the reading of this morning's gospel passage, I'm sure many of you wondered, why would Craig choose a scripture like that with all this talk of demons, blasphemy, houses divided, and redefinitions of family? What does it possibly have to do with what's going on? Actually, quite a lot. But before I help you see how it all comes together and relates, Will you join me now for a moment of prayer? Gracious God, as we gather this day to celebrate pride and later to install a new lead minister, we give thanks for the, the chance to engage a passage that might be troublesome or even triggering for some. May your spirit be particularly generous and gracious with us this morning so that we might find a way to hear old and even offensive words in new ways that can give us a new hope and a new purpose in our ministry. We ask this in Jesus' beloved name. Amen. So in order to engage the material in this morning's passage, we've got to do a little work. You need to take that material that was given in a pre-modern context and try to figure out how the concepts of which it speaks fits into a modern world. And nowhere is that work more important than trying to figure out what Jesus was speaking of when he used the word Satan. A Presbyterian colleague of mine by the name of Nibs, N-I-B-S, Strope, does a beautiful job of helping us put this into context. For in his commentary in the passage, Nibs wrote, and I quote, Satan does not necessarily mean a personality with horns and a red tail, but it does name a power that is actively engaged against the compassionate and reconciling love of God. And stated or considered in this way, Strope continues, the reality of Satan and Beelzebul becomes disturbingly clear. For they name forces and configurations of power that capture us and cause us to hurt others. Forces that cause us to hurt ourselves and forces that even conspire to hurt God. He goes on to say that these Forces often take the form of things like racism, sexism, ageism, ableism, and heterosexism. And in these verses from Mark, Strope concluded, Jesus indicates that the power of these categories must be recognized and confronted in our lives if we are to experience the gracious and stunning love of God. Now, many of us might have got a little squeamish when we were heard in another part of the passage words about casting out demons, again, in that pre-modern context. But when we put those concepts into today's setting, suddenly casting out demons like racism, sexism, and heterosexism sounds awfully good, right? Well, before you run out and sign up to be an exorcist, Strope includes these words of caution. He says, this kind of work is hard. Harder in some ways than the work that was portrayed in that old film with Linda Blair. And to make his point, Strope shares his own experiences of grappling with the demon of racism. He shares that, that he was raised in the Deep South, the state of Arkansas, on the Delta River in the 1950s and the 1960s. 
And he remembers that as these exorcists moved into the South in the form of civil rights workers, he admits that he was resistant to their work. Why, you ask? Well, this is where the work gets really hard. He said, I was resistant to the movement because I had been taught that white supremacy and the racism that undergirds it, undergirds it. He adds, I had accepted this ideology and I had been taught it not, this is the hard part, I had been taught it not by mean and terrible people, but I had been taught it by caring people such as my mother and my father and my church leaders. As Strope slowly opened himself to the expansive love of Jesus over the years, he writes that he began to appreciate why Jesus calls the configuration of these forces Satan and why Jesus went so far as to indicate that his own family might be a part of the problem. Those forces that conspire against us, against receiving the fullness of God's love, are hard to remove because their roots are often twisted into the very earliest sources of love that we knew. And friends, on this Pride weekend, I can tell you that those of us in the, w in the LGBTQIA plus community know that all too well. And I'll use myself as an example. I was raised in a denomination whose official policy toward LGBTQIA plus people for over 50 years was that my personhood was, and I quote, incompatible with Christian teaching. And because of that, I was raised by a mother who went to her grave 11 years ago feeling a twinge of guilt for loving me, concerned about what that meant for my eternal well-being. Whew. Now you begin to feel why doing this exorcism work is so hard and what it forces us to face. But there is good news, my friends. As we face those powers that threaten to separate us from God's love and even from ourselves, we have a broadened support network that can give us the strength to expel those demons. A bigger, more devoted family than some of us ever dreamed possible. A community committed to exercising those powers of bias in every form, those who can pick us up when we've been knocked down. Sounds good, right? But again, there is a, a challenge associated. For you see, as the person who is called to serve that family here in New Jersey, in the United Church of Christ, I need this morning to name for you a very real challenge I face every day I wake up in this ministry field. For you see, Jesus observed in verse 25 of today's reading that a house divided can not stand. I came to this place called New Jersey and found 252 boroughs, 241 townships, 15 towns, 4 villages, and 21 counties. Each of them are governed by a principle called local control or home rule, meaning that each of them do pretty much their own thing. And to make matters worse, each of the municipalities exist in a state without a major newspaper or a television station of its own, making it so hard to know what is really happening in this place called New Jersey. Well, thankfully, our beloved denomination has been called by God to do work that few others can in this deeply divided house. 
For you see, most other Christian traditions have taken the state of New Jersey and done what everyone else has, broken it up into smaller units, into districts, classes, di dioceses, and presbyteries. It is only the United Church of Christ and the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America that puts the whole of the state as the next setting of church. And because of it, because I am driving 2,000 miles a month in every part of the state, I can see and name things that few others see. Let me give you a quick example of what I see in the context of pride. Last fall, I saw a movement spreading like wildfire through the boards of education all over our state seeking to overturn something called Policy 5756, the protected transgender students in public schools. One by one, ever so quietly, boards of education began undoing the policy. I had the opportunity to go with one of our local churches in Homedale to try to defend the policy, but sadly, that church stood largely alone in its efforts. And that district became one of so many that had the policy overturned. Weeks later, I was with one of our churches in Monmouth County as they were struggling with their board of education, who was going into the library's computers and blocking the search engine of any mention of things like gender, sexuality, and even the word Holocaust. And this spring, I have watched in one municipality after another as efforts to broaden and expand attempts to ban books have grown. I see these things that few others do, and I see the possibility that we in the United Church of Christ have to stand together in opposition. What saddened me in each of these instances is the relative lack of resistance that was offered by Jerseyans. Why? Because so few of us can see the whole. And those who do often shrug their shoulders and walk away saying, what are you going to do? We'll look after me and mine. Well, friends, I come to you this morning to say, if we pull together, we can do a lot. If we draw the circle wide and broaden our view of family here in New Jersey. But it won't be easy, let me tell you, after 18 months. In fact, I was recently talking to one of our leaders about the progressive work that their church was doing they were meeting with service providers in their township. They were collaborating with local churches in their county on ministry projects. And they were doing earth-shattering work on interfaith relationships. And after he lined all the work out, he said, that's what happens when you are willing to cross all lines. And I said, all lines? He said, of course. And I said, even your county line? And he was silent. Friends, on this Pride Sunday, I celebrate what you have been able to achieve here in Montclair. I even celebrate your powerful witness in Essex County. But in the face of all of that, I want to leave you with a word of challenge. Don't stop there. I and we need you to push yourself and take your witness of love, reconciliation, and justice far beyond the bounds of this township or this county. It is unacceptable that the state of New Jersey ranks 29th. It is the second to last blue state 
in a ranking of LGBTQ safety. Friends, I need you to work with us in the United Church of Christ to be a presence in places like Glassboro. A lot of folks didn't even know we had a church there. Willingboro, in Hackettstown, Maple Shade, and even Egg Harbor City, where the same gender-loving clergy person regularly receives notes from the local Baptist church saying, we are praying for you. I need you to do the most radical thing possible. Draw the circle wide and embrace this thing called Jersey pride. Not northern Jersey, but Jersey pride that includes the whole of our house. Transform Montclair from a place where people go from outlying areas seeking refuge from bigotry, and instead make Montclair the place from which justice and reconciliation radiate from Park Ridge to Cape May. For if you commit to doing that on this important day, when you open a new chapter in your ministry later today around 2 o'clock, in doing so, you will change the very nature of pride itself. For pride will no longer simply be a calendar page, a single calendar page. Rather, pride will become a way of life 365 days a year for our families, our faith communities, and yes, even all of our townships. Together, may we take down some of those silos. Amen.
say that um, back on Epiphany, you might remember that we drew star words, words that are supposed to inspire us and guide us over the course of the year. And my word was radiate. And I had been wondering for about six months what in the world that was supposed to do for me this year. So thank you, Pastor Craig, for illuminating that. We enter now into a time of prayer, lifting up the joys and concerns on each of our hearts before God and in the presence of a loving community. And I begin with a tremendous joy. A year ago, John David and Jeremy and Kim showed up to the Montclair Pride Festival with this dream and an idea of launching a community pride choir and had a big bulletin board and a QR code to see if they could find we're hoping for like a dozen people who might want to like sing together occasionally and find some community. Well, a year later, this past week, Pride Choir, which has about 40 people in it, um, sang about five concerts this week, one of which was in Trenton at the invitation of the Attorney General at the fourth annual Pride flag raising at the Justice Center there. Talk about radiating pride. They performed here in our own sanctuary to a packed house of the most enthusiastic, loving community that I have seen. And they performed yesterday on the main stage of the Pride Festival to, I don't know, six or eight hundred people or so. So I just give thanks. Um, for John David and for Jeremy and for Kim and for their vision for creating a community to express uh, the beauty of LGBTQ people, to express joy and to connect. Um, I also want to thank Lori, who has generously donated her time and talent uh, for every rehearsal over the last year on Sunday afternoons and all of these performances to be their accompanist. So thank you, Lori, uh, for that ministry. Can we just give a huge... I also want to celebrate uh, those of you who helped volunteer at our, our booth at uh, Montclair Pride yesterday. Um, thank you to Kim, uh, as always, for her setup and communications. Uh, Patty painted about 100 faces with rainbows and baked some special chocolate treats. Marcy, who helped set up and clean up. Uh, Rob and Sally and Ina and Isabel and Carlos and I'm missing people. Jeannie, thank you. Um, and there might have been a few others. So um, thank you for your time and for helping radiate our church's presence in the wider community and to all of us for continuing to live into our open and affirming commitment and draw the circle wider. We continue in prayer this morning, giving thanks for the life of John Richardson, Mike and Catherine Spinella's brother-in-law, who died yesterday after a long struggle with Parkinson's disease. We hold Catherine and Mike and their whole family in our prayers. They were with John um, yesterday, I believe in Virginia, and I imagine are still there this morning. We also have prayers of gratitude for Darian Wilson's Aunt Doris, who passed away peacefully this week at 102 years young. We pray for Darian and her family as they remember Doris. We have another prayer of joy and gratitude. Um, personal thank you to the beautiful banners that you see around the pillars that were um, secretly handcrafted by Michelle and Michelle Sionis and Sarah Tamargo um, that have lifted up some of the sermons that I have given over the last five years that the congregation recognized as, as special and meaningful. So thank you for that beautiful gift. We also pray in gratitude, this is a few weeks delayed, but um, Peggy Shao's daughter, B. Kim, was sworn in as vice president of Taiwan about three weeks ago, and Peggy was able to be with her in person as well as her wider family. So we lift up joy for uh, B. Kim and pray over her continued leadership in a, a difficult moment in Taiwan's politics. We continue to pray for the people of Gaza, for 
confess that the bombs that our tax dollars fund continue to kill innocent people there, even in hospitals and schools. We give thanks for the four Israeli hostages who were reunited with their families this weekend and pray for an immediate end to this war and violence. We pray also for our own country as the Biden administration enacted a reprise of the Remain in Mexico policy for the thousands of migrants who are fleeing unlivable conditions who have been caught in the net of this policy. May a more humane way prevail. And we pray for the people of Europe as they cast ballots in an influential election. We continue to pray for Doris Brett, for Liz Kaplan, for Charles' husband Reyes, who began the process of a stem cell transplant this week, for Kelly and Bill and Cindy and Bob and Don and for Kate Katatourian, who will be having surgery next week to remove a blood clot from her leg. Let us continue in prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers this morning. Hear our gratitude for Pride Month, Pride festivals, Pride choir, and our church, which is deepening its open and affirming commitment. Hear our gratitude for families of all shapes and sizes and for times that the church can act like family, living its love out loud and drawing the circle ever wider. Hear too our sorrow, our worries, our fears, for loved ones in the midst of illness or struggle, for those we named this morning and those we hold in our hearts, for people living in the midst of war, from Gaza to Ukraine, Sudan and beyond, for people migrating because of violence, because of climate change, and for so many more reasons. God, may you be the lamp for their way and usher them to safety. Loving God, remind us that love is a verb. Love is not possessive. It's not there to close the gates behind us but rather open wide the channels of love that it may pour out on your people like a stream and it may usher in a realm that prizes vulnerability over power, communal care over individual gain, and righteousness over rightness. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Who are Christ's brothers and sisters? Who are his family? Those who do the will of God. Loving God, loving neighbor, we are called to share what we have as members of the household of Christ. Your offerings will now be received.
spirit of faith, great God, we thank you for the opportunity to give tithes and offerings out of our abundance, to participate in extending your grace to more and more of the extended human family you call your own, and to give all glory to you. Amen. A few announcements uh, this morning, and I'm going to invite um, So He uh, Co forward. He's, she's going to make a, an update about the search committee's progress. So you can head towards the pulpit, and I'll do a few other announcements as you're on your way up. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we have a double header of a church day today. So, between now and two o'clock, uh, immediately following the service, we have a light coffee hour set up on the porch. And if it's not too soggy, and I don't know if it's still raining or not, hopefully not, we'll have some lawn games out on the lawn and invite you to stay and have some fellowship. And then at 12.30, lunch will be served in the assembly room. And at 2 p.m., the installation service will begin. Um, I just want to highlight a few other announcements coming up next Saturday, uh, June 15th at 7 p.m., uh, Reverend John Rogers, the uh, co-minister of First Congregational Church, and his wife, Allison Rogers, who's also a music director at uh, Brookdale Reformed Church, are presenting a special concert of shaker music. Um, they presented to the Women's Breakfast a few months ago, and I know there were many people who wished they could attend that who weren't able to. So we invite you to uh, attend their concert at First Kong next Saturday. In two weeks, uh, the UCC players are putting on a production of one-act plays called Summertime Stories. That will be Friday and Saturday nights, the 21st and 22nd at 7 p.m. and Sunday afternoon at 3. And also that Sunday, the June 23rd, our Interfaith Climate March, which has been rescheduled from May 5th, uh, will take place starting at 1 p.m., begin at the First United Methodist Church on North Fullerton near Bloomfield Avenue. Uh, please do check out your bulletins for other announcements, but so he, go ahead. Good morning, church. So at our last update in early May, our search committee had just started interviewing candidates. Since that time, we've met multiple times over Zoom with several highly qualified and compelling candidates. Um, we're thrilled to report that we have narrowed down our pool and we're going to be meeting in person with two ministers. We have invited them to Montclair for further conversation and activities over the next month. We are really eager to meet them and get a better sense of who they are and how their personality, talents, and experiences might add to our church and community here. Um, please continue to keep our committee in your prayers that these ministers come to meet us in our place, um, that as these ministers come to meet us in our place, we are able to offer a safe, inviting environment that reflects the warmth and vitality of Union Kong. Um, also, please pray for these two ministers and their families that through the uncertainty of this process, they feel assured in God's love and plans for them. We are ever grateful to you all for entrusting us with this responsibility. Um, and like you, we eagerly wait to see who God will call to help minister our beloved church. We'll be in touch again soon. Thank you. able to sing the, our final hymn, In Christ There is, is No East or West, which is inserted into your bulletin.
at the month of June being asked, why do we observe pride? What's it all about? Well, what it's all about is the church, our families, and other places in society have taught us to diminish or decline our light. So the words of sending this Pride Month and always is the same for all of us. It's about radiating and letting our light shine. So I've asked as the sung benediction spontaneously, your song leader, to lead us in a chorus of this little light of mine. Let's sing it through twice. Could I have an E flat, please? <laughs> this, ready? And this 